Oh man, I'm hot. Just got back. What a journey. So, what have you guys been up to? What I've been up to recently is I purchased one of these. Learn Thai alphabet. Thai characters are really cool. According to Wikipedia, they possibly date back to hieroglyphs. I can sort of believe that if we look at scripts like this. Sort of has a, I don't know, a hieroglyphic look. But I purchased that and I've been working through sort of one letter at a day. I know that's a slow pace, but it gives me time to go out on the street and observe writing and sort of match it with what I'm learning. On to today's adventure. Maynak Prakanong. Yes, I'm reading from Wikipedia. I don't want to stuff any details up. Maynak of Prakanong is a, a very big, a very classic story in Thai mythology, Thai folklore. A rough equivalent, I guess, would be the corpse bride. The story of sort of love transcending the barrier as it is. So the story of Maynak is that Maynak is, was a, a lady who was married to Pimak. Pimak was conscripted out to the army and while he was away fighting at some war, Maynak gave birth but died during childbirth. The child was stillborn. When Pimak returned from the war, he found Maynak and the child in the house just as, as normal, but um, the villagers tried to tell Pimak that Maynak was a ghost, but Maynak apparently killed them or something, and Pimak didn't believe it until one day they were cooking and Maynak dropped a lime off the porch, like out of the house, and just in a moment, in a moment of haste, stretched down to pick up the lime, stretched her arm to an unnatural length, and that tipped off Pimak that she was a ghost. So the Maynak shrine was originally in Prakanong, but in 1997 was relocated to a nearby district. I'm not exactly sure what the, the reasoning for that was, but anyway, still the district is near Prakanong and Prakanong is an area in Bangkok. So given that so many ghost movies were made about Maynak, I thought it would be cool to visit. However, Google Maps told me it would be about a two hour walk. Now, there are two issues with that. Number one is Google Maps has a tendency I found to send me down weird side streets. And number two is I still don't know how to cross roads. It's challenging. There are several components to it. It's a skill I have not yet mastered. So for that reason, I decided to take a bus. And this is where things get very interesting. So the way you take a bus in Thailand is you just do a little search online, Google Maps, whatever you want, um, take a route by bus, and they'll give you, you know, start at this stop, take this bus number, go to this stop. So basically you go, you wait at the stop, the stop should have a sign with the numbers of the bus routes which will stop there. And if you're really lucky, they'll have an electronic sign with an approximate timetable. But anyway, you wait till the bus arrives, hop on the bus, make sure to hop on quickly because they are in a hurry. And I, I have seen them sometimes stop actually several lanes out from the edge of the road. So just be aware of your surroundings, hop on the bus anyway. There are two staff members on the bus. One is the driver, the other is the conductor. Once you're on the bus, and the bus is in motion, the conductor will find you or come along to everyone who has hopped on the bus at that stop and they'll buy a ticket. Tickets, super cheap. The ticket for the trip I took was eight baht. Now for comparison, eight baht in Australian dollars is 34 cents to US dollars, it's 23 cents. So imagine being able to take a bus ride for, you know, 34 cents, 23 cents or something. That's a good deal. And it's very authentic too. It's, it was a very cool experience. Now, also for comparison, I had a look at Grab, 
Thailand version of Uber and they were quoting about 245 baht. So 245 baht, which is about $10.47 Australian versus 34 cents Australian. I know which one I'm going with. So at this point, I'll just throw in a little bit of footage. The shrine was very cool, very nice. Lots of cats. I'm surprised, there are a lot of cats hanging out at that shrine. Besides that, there's also a canal which goes along the side of the shrine where some offerings are usually made. Now, the number of offerings you can make, you can purchase incense sticks and they'll light them for you and you just put them in a sand bucket and burn them on the side of the canal. You can purchase buckets of live fish and release the fish into the canal or you can purchase sort of bags of bread and feed the fish or I guess the flocks of pigeons which also hang out in the region and I'm sure there are oh, you can also release lotus flowers and there are other countless offerings a lot of this was in Thai script and as of right now I know one letter or two letters in Thai script so I had no chance of deciphering what the full options were but what I did is I purchased some incense sticks and it's a pay what you want basis and I paid 100 baht, it's like five dollars or something and for that I received also a free bag of bread so I went ahead and fed the carp and they got very they were very hungry indeed also at the shrine you can pray to Maynak and ask for various things. Although I did speak with a local who informed me that you cannot ask to be free of army conscription because Maynak is jealous that her husband got conscripted to the army. She's not going to help you. You're on your own with that one. I don't know what to say there. But yeah, so I'll try to only make these when something serious is going down. But um, as always, all the best. Have fun, and I'll see you around. Bye.